Good morning, everyone. I'm Mike. Welcome to Dark Horizon Creations. And today we are concluding our tutorial series on Let's Paint a Warthog with the fifth and final video in this series on repainting the Master Chief action figure. Uh, first, allow me to apologize for the delay for this video uh, being posted. Uh, it was scheduled to be posted over a month ago, and I just didn't get around to it, honestly. I was just depressed going through a lot of things and you know, it is what it is. Nonetheless, here we are today and we're gonna conclude this video series. One of the things you may notice right up front is the quality of the video. That is because I have switched uh, to an iPhone 11. I previously had uh, a prepaid phone that I was using for all of my videos. Uh, it had a 13 megapixel camera on it and uh, I decided to switch carriers, and uh, when I did, I went with an iPhone 11, and as you can see, the video quality is like night and day, and uh, I'm just ecstatic over this. I can't wait to uh, start snapping away with uh, pics on this phone and editing my toy pictures. I think I'm going to have a lot of great success with, with this device. So, as you can see over on the left-hand side here, I've got a Master Chief figure that I've previously repainted. I actually repainted that one for this particular video. And uh, you can see how I've got him weathered and, and dirtied up. You can see his MA-40 uh, assault rifle there. And uh, I've got some blue on there for the ammo counter. And just a really, really nice looking figure. There's a lot of ways that you can do this. And that's one of the things that I like to emphasize to those of you who uh, follow me on social media, you watch my videos and, and look at my pics of toys and things like that. There's no right or wrong way to customize an action figure or a toy. Before I started doing this, I watched a lot of toy reviews and, and things on YouTube and, and read tutorials on a lot of the sites like Figure Realm, TFW2005, things like that. And there are a lot of people out there who have been doing this for a long time. There are people out there who I guess would consider themselves to be experts at this. Um, they might not call themselves that, but some of them do. And honestly, one of the things that I found is that some people have the mindset that their way is the right way. Uh, you know, they think if you don't do things their way, it's wrong. Or if you use a certain product, it's not right. Case in point, Apple Barrel. This is craft paint you buy in Walmart. It sells for usually 50 cent a bottle. Some of the uh, bottles like this multi-surface, outdoor, indoor, around 97 cent a bottle. And Apple Barrel is owned by Plaid. Crafts, they also own folk art and those two bottles are the two primary colors that we're going to be using today and you know i've seen a lot of tutorials where they say you know don't use craft paint you know you need to use uh, model masters or vallejo or you know whatever and i came across an article by a gentleman who had been doing this for probably 20 years he was an older guy and he he wrote me a really long message. He took the time to try to help me out, and this was years ago. And one of the things that he said was that he had been using Apple Barrel craft paint. He told me he didn't even wash his figures to get mold release or anything like that off of them. And his work was just phenomenal. You know, and as I began repainting toys in uh, 2015, I, I started with Star Wars, The Force Awakens vehicles. Um, you know, of course I wasn't that great at it, but the more that I painted, the more lessons that I learned, the better at it that I got. And, you know, I'm not an expert by any means. I don't claim to be, uh, I certainly don't know it all. I know there's a lot of other techniques out there that, you know, can get you better results like airbrushing and things like that. But for those of you like me who like to brush by hand and, you know, you, you can't afford, you know, an airbrush or things of that nature. Um, 
the techniques that I'm about to show you will work. They'll get you good results. And, you know, this isn't about uh, a competition. You're not trying to compete with people or be like someone else. You know, you're doing this for fun. Uh, if you're not doing it for fun, you're doing it for the wrong reason. You know, I didn't get on social media and start sharing pictures or, you know, writing articles or things because I wanted attention or I wanted followers or subscribers. I'm just sharing my interest and my passion for things, particularly science fiction and fantasy. Um, you know, and through that, you know, it's opened up doors for me, you know, to do things like in the past, I've I uh, was invited to be a contributing columnist for Outer Rim News, a uh, great Star Wars fan-based third-party site uh, out of Georgia. Um, it's opened up doors for me to serve as a technical consultant for Valiverse, uh, which is the parent company for the Action Force uh, comic and toy line. Uh, and I've got to meet a lot of great people, you know, uh, through that. So I think that you know, the greatest advice that I could give to anyone is just experiment with different paints and products and toys and things like that. Of course, you know, continue to do research and read articles and things of that nature. Uh, but just have fun. You know, if you mess something up, it's not the end of the world. It feels like it to me because <laughs> I'm autistic and, uh, you know, things affect me a certain way. But, you know, it's a it's a learning process. You know, you learn each time you do this. So with that, what I want to do first is to show you guys how to apply a wash to the Halo action figures like Master Chief here. So what I'm gonna do is free him from this Frankenstein box. And we'll go ahead and take his weapon out as well. And before I begin, I want to show you guys the weapons that they include. In the world of Halo scale, the, the four inch figures, they, they only include one weapon, but you can see they're made out of that soft plastic. It's almost like rubber and, you know, sometimes you're going to have to heat these in hot water and bend them into shape. Um, just like the cannons on the Warthog. So these are really nice figures. They're, they're you know, super articulated. Um, they're all in scale to one another. You know, Master Chief and the Brutes and Elites and things like that are much taller than the humans, and that's really cool. I think that is a, a really great thing that Wicked Cool Toys has done. They've gone the extra mile with these figures. But we want to make Master Chief look a little more realistic, a little more weathered. So what I'm going to do, I've already got a wash mixed up down here using the uh, black satin acrylic. And this is a Royal Art brush. Again, same craft brushes that you find at Walmart. And I just want to get the bristles soft on it. And you just want to take it and soak it, you know, in the wash. And you just start at the head and just dab it on the figure. You know, there's no, again, no right or wrong way to do this. You just want to coat him with this wash. And what this is going to do if you've never done this before, you don't know what a wash is. Essentially what you're doing is diluting the, the paint in a small amount of water. And the wash will seep down into the panel lines and uh, other detailed areas on a toy like an action figure like this. And you're gonna let it sit for a few minutes not until it's dry, but you want to give it time to, to really get into these areas. And here on the back, there's a lot of nice details, panel lines there. Um, his back armor that contains his thrusters back here for the jet pack and 
the computer and all that's controlled back there. There's nice details on the thigh and leg armor. As well as on the boots. And you don't have to stand the figure up like this. You can lay it down um, however you choose to do it. And you can make the wash as thick or as thinned out as you want. This is kind of thinned out here. It's got more water in it. And the way you can tell that is by looking at the figure, you see how watery that it appears to be. You know, if you have a, a wash that has more paint than water, the paint's just going to kind of sit there, even with the figure standing up like this. It'll look all puddled up like that, but it won't won't uh, run down the figure. So that's all you're doing, and you can allow the figure to stand there and just sort of sort of dry partially and that'll give the wash time to to seep in all the panel lines and crevices and while it's doing that um, what I'll do is I'll show you guys what we're going to do with the gun uh, we've got this metallic gunmetal gray shake it up I'm just going to leave the paint bottle cap here. I'm going to take this brush. These are fine tip brushes that I got off of Amazon. What I like to do when I'm applying paint is I like to dry brush it on if possible. I'll apply paint to the brush and then wipe a good good amount of it off and then come back. Because you don't want the you don't want the paint to goop up on the toy. You want it to be even. You can see the details starting to come out in it. Gunmetal is a good color to apply to things like uh, barrels of weapons and things of that nature because they are they are a metallic color, and oftentimes what you encounter on a weapon in real life uh, is a lot of exposed metal from where the gun's been dropped or scraped against rocks or things like that in combat. And 
know, some of you are probably looking at this thinking, well, you're just kind of putting it on there. No, I'm not. I've got a very specific reason why I'm doing it the way that I'm doing it. Because we're going to go back and wipe off the excess. And I could do a wash on here, but um, it's not what I'm, I'm going for. I'm going to apply a little bit of this where the ammo counter would be because we're going to come back and paint that a blue color. So now what I'm going to do is pull out a Q-tip and show you guys how to remove excess paint in the wash. You just kind of barely want out to touch. You guys see that? Now, you can see that spot right there where it's sat. That's what you don't want. And we'll take care of that in a minute. So I've shown you guys one way to apply the wash. And the, the figure that's included with the Warthog, the Master Chief, does not include a display stand, unfortunately. Only the individual figures come with those. So I've shown you how to apply the wash. I'm going to show you a second technique that I use. I'm going to take a little bit of paint on the, on the brush. Like so. This is another way that you can weather these figures. There's much more paint on here, but it's still wet because I've just applied the wash. Essentially what you're doing is dry brushing it on there even though it's wet. You're wiping off all the excess. And if you look, you can see the difference in the color. This is darkened down from that. And you want to make certain that you don't leave any spots of paint on there.
and see how the paint's settling right here in its chest area. And I'll do this again. What I'm gonna do is put a little, little paint in the palette there. I've got a little bit more to work with. And I just come down on these paper towels with a brush and just wipe off as much as possible. And you're gonna go over to a second time when you're doing it like this, you really can't allow it to sit for a very long time because if you do, it's going to have an adverse effect on the way the figure looks. You know, you have to almost wipe it off immediately versus allowing it to sit if it was, you know, just a regular wash. by adding multiple coats of it, you can give his armor a more weathered appearance. And by just using one coat. And I try to wipe it off with a Q-tip the way, you know, if he were standing, the way water would drip off of his armor, like if it were raining or if he had been you know, moving with a team through a river or something like that and they were in chest high water or, you know, what have you. And just try to imagine the, the figure in a realistic scenario and how you want his armor to look. You know, maybe you want him to be uh, factory new and you just want some dings and scratches or, or what have you. Or you're like me and you want him to have a more weathered look from being on a alien world or planet for a more ex extended period of time. It's just all up to you how you want the, the toy to look. And you just kind of let... <clears throat> excuse me, to let your imagination guide you and how you weather the, weather the figure. And you know, his, his boots are gonna be far more dirty than anything else. And you can use these two techniques together. You can use this technique to, you know, provide weathering to the armor itself. Okay. While you're also using the wash to get into all the panel lines. And that's all there is to it. That's all you're doing to weather these action figures. And, you know, 
you can go back again and make the figure as clean or as dirty as you want. Okay? It's entirely up to you how you want these action figures to look. Now, let's say, for example, that you want the Master Chief to look like he's been in the mud. I've got some nutmeg brown here. boots and the sides you can come up here and paint his knee and shin shin armor and maybe he's been kneeling in the mud while conducting reconnaissance or using a sniper rifle to take out a jackal Just do the same thing. You just wipe off the excess. Leave as much or as little as you like. It's however you want the figure to look. And again, You can repeat that process. And if you want this to dry on the bottom of his feet, just, you know, lay the figure on his back. But you guys can see, you know, how that makes the figure look uh, by doing that. And now he really, really uh, starting to look like he's he's been in it, you know, he's been in a serious fight somewhere fighting the Covenant. And if you look at the figure now, you can see all the all the panel lines and detailing and things like that really, really stand out. And if you don't like it, you can wipe it down and start over. And the easiest way to do that is to use 70% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, take a paper towel like what I'm using, and I use these Scott's glass paper towels. They're shop towels made specifically for cleaning car glass. Uh, I use those because they have almost no uh, lint come off of them. And uh, you can take those and dab a little bit of alcohol in there, wipe the figure down, clean it, and start over. Now for his assault rifle, we're going to use a little bit of this cobalt blue. Put a little bit of that in there because that's all that I need. Same brush. I'm just going to come here and and then I'll wipe the excess off the side. Paint the ammo counter. And then we will come here with our wash. Okay, 
apply some of that to the gun. Because if the chief's dirty, his weapon's going to be dirty. set that to the side come here and paint in these lights on their armor are there to identify them to each other. It's like an IR beacon on a special operations soldier's helmet. That's what it's there for. It's not so that they can see in the dark their helmets have integrated thermal and night vision in them. When other soldiers see that, they know that's a Spartan. guys can see and again once this dries I'm going to have to possibly run it under hot water again I think it might hold now but it's not perfect you know because it's soft plastic I don't know why they paint it like that But I think that has something to do with, with the process when it comes out of the mold release and they apply that paint, it causes it to warp. But that's all there is to it. And he'll come out looking like this. So there you have part five of Let's How to Paint a Warthog. I painted the Master Chief figure. Hope you guys have enjoyed the, the video series. The next series that I'm going to do for Halo is going to be the uh, UNSC uh, Pelican Snap Tight Kit. And after we complete that series, I don't know how many parts it'll be, but I'm going to break it down so that the videos are no more than no more than 10 minutes long. I'm going to try to keep them under five. Um, but after we do that series, I'm going to start taking pictures. Uh, and you guys can follow that on Instagram. Thank you guys for following the video series. Thank you for following. Thank you to all of my subscribers. We're up to around 223 subscribers on YouTube now. It's always fun to meet people from around the world. Um, uh, and you know, talk to you guys that share, you know, uh, same interest and passion for Star Wars, Halo, Marvel, and different things, DC. And uh, I'm working on a Lennard Toys Alien Queen repaint that's behind the Master Chief there. She is not complete. And uh, I've been working on that for about a month now. Actually, I've been working on that for two months, uh, since the middle of March. Um, so I've got a lot of projects uh, that I'm going to be sharing on YouTube and uh, a lot more pictures that you guys are going to see custom of on Instagram where I may not do a complete video of. Uh, but again, thank you guys for, for watching. If you haven't already, uh, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go over to Instagram, Dark Horizon Creations. 
and follow me on there as well. If you guys have comments or questions or if there's a custom you like to see me do or something you know that you want done as a commission, uh, you can email me at darkhorizoncreations at gmail.com and we'll help you turn your ideas into reality. Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned. There's more to come.